Lord be with all those young kids going to when the basement. To the place oh, I forgot. The that easy before, have I? No. All right, somebody gave me two of these candies. Thank you, Hunter. And just blindly, I'm going to toss it out there and see who comes up with it. I'm going to try to hit that back row because they're, they're incoming. <laughs> that comes with a, a free dental floss. Anybody want that? <laughs> Doesn't everybody have one of these ready to buy it? You gotta be ready for everything. All right, so that's my uh, gift to you for the week. Be prepared, be prepared. This message must be shared. Welcome to Easter week series called Written in Red. Written in Red. No, it's not called that at all. Woo! Okay, start over. It's called Red Letter Day. It's revealed in red, all right? Just play with me. It, Play fair. Here we go. I hope you had a red letter week. Now, if you asked your neighbor, did you have a red letter week? You know, to have a red letter week, you need to have a couple at least red letter days, right? Right? Come on. Amen. I want us to raise our hand if we had at least two or three red letter days this week. Just just, you know, modestly, that's fine. Oh, put my... Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome, awesome. Listen, uh, <clears throat> it requires something of us, and we're going to touch base with that in just a moment. But the red letter day is something that came up in the, in the 1500s, 1400s, when the church was trying to highlight a certain day as this should stand out this should be memorable and they put the letters in red and uh today if we could get past that to think of the letters in red are the ones jesus writes those are the red letters to really go what did jesus say because that's really really important so we like to start with something funny i heard about a little girl who was dressed in her sunday best and she was running as fast as she could so she would not be late for church. She prayed, dear Lord, please don't let me be, be late. Dear Lord, please don't let me be late. And about then she tripped on a curb and she fell face forward. She got up, she brushed herself up, she continued running. Dear Lord, please don't let me be late. And as she looked up to heaven, she said, and please don't shove me either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, grab your Bible, say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I have what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I'll boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that we're not just saying words here. We're opening up our heart to be filled with you. I want my mind to be transformed to the likeness of you. Lord, the closer I get to you, the more joy I can't even express how much joy you can pour into my life. But when I do things on my own, I can't express how empty and vain I can become. So, Lord, help us to be what you made us to be in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right, today, um, I'm going to look back for last week and say... Um, we all want a red letter day, right? I, don't you raise your hand if you want a red letter day. I want it to be red letter. Yeah. I want to get up and say, this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Uh, I don't wake up that way. You know me. You know me. I've shared enough. 
Mornings are, are not my high point. Mornings are, are the time that I I don't know if I can survive. All right, so um, I want us to really get this in my spirit. And, and God's doing something transformational in, in my life with this series already. So bear with me a second. The, the generic definition of Red Letter Day is pleasant or noteworthy, memorable. It's quaint. It's kind of empty as well, right? Because I've, I've had some red letter days that are like memorable or kind of noteworthy that were devoid of Jesus, right? It didn't need Jesus to be involved in, in that day to, to say, well, that was a red letter day in my life. Here's the definition I would like us to replace that with. And if you have a piece of paper, your handout to write on, write this down. Red Letter Day, I want it to be meaningful. 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 Full of meaning. Full of validity. Full of that counting because of the meaning of this day, because of the red letters of Jesus. Because of there's something that happened because I allowed God to do it today. And not that it's red letter on the calendar for any other reason than God made it meaningful. There's no more noteworthy or red letter day than 33 AD. Jesus dies on the cross and transforms the old covenant to the new covenant. And we're going to figure out what that is a little bit through the sermon. So I'm not going to go into that right now. And there's this highlighting in red of Jesus' words on the cross. And that's the subject of this series. What we're talking about, these written in red words. What did Jesus say from the cross? So last week we talked about... He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And remember the title, really, last week, what we're talking about was not to say why, but to say what, what, instead. And somebody in the room texted me and said, that really helped me. And a relative that was here with me, that I, when you're going through something tough and hard, it's easy to go, why? Well, God, why? Instead of, what's my assignment? That takes a sting out of it, doesn't it? Gives you a whole different perspective. And I don't tend to unleash on family members when I'm saying, okay, God, that was painful. But what? You've been trying it this week? Does anybody at least, not that I'm going to have you share your personal testimony, but this week you have a why that turned into a no, what? Just this week you had a why that, that could have been a why, but you, you changed it into a what? Yes. One. Three. Yes. Amen. Awesome. Okay, we're getting this. We're getting this. Now, note that Jesus... Says on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And, and it, just looking at surface value, you think, Jesus is feeling right now like God cannot look upon sin. And actually, there's some theologians that have written books that in that moment, God could not look upon sin. Not true. If that's true, you and I are in a very bad place this morning. Amen? That is not true. God never took his eyes off his son. Because if he took his eyes off his son, then he sure as well is going to take his eyes off you and me when we sin. And that's not true. He was saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he knew his assignment and he was pointing his whole crowd from then till now until he comes again to Psalm chapter 22, which spoke exactly about where he was hanging on the cross. Speaking of the wounds in his hands and his feet, this hadn't been invented yet, but is written of 600 years before. Jesus is quoting Psalm 22. And then you go through Psalm 22 and you, you, you hear the, 
the validity of exactly what he's going through on the cross, this instrument of torture that hadn't been invented yet, but he's quoting from. That's crazy. It's awesome. And then you get to the end of Psalm 22 where he just lavishes what I'm doing on the cross. I know full well, and it is for you to know forgiveness, to know my deep love for you, to be saved. Is there a... Let it out. You're going to hurt yourself. Okay, go. <laughs> Amen. Did anybody have some victory in your assignment this week? I, I, I assume if you raised your hand, you had a victory just that you raised your hand because you didn't stick with the why. You converted it to a what would you have me do here, Lord? What's my assignment? I get to go to the hospital again for, for this whatever I have. Who do you want me to minister to, God? I'm open. What's my assignment? Yeah, I don't like it. Cover me, I'm going in. It changes everything. My dad, when he's dying in a hospital room on the second floor in noise, in 1994, everybody who went in came out going, what just happened? <laughs> I went in there to encourage him. He flipped that thing totally around on me. What do you want me to pray for you today about? How can I minister to you? And I didn't even minister to Richard Parker. He's in there blessing me. Dad seemed to somehow know his assignment. Not that he's perfect because he wasn't. Just ask my older brothers. <laughs> he got perfected by the time he got to me or so. I don't know. <laughs> don't ask him too much. But everybody wants, everybody wants a red letter day. I want a red letter day. I, I, I want to remind you that a red letter day is available to you. Not just on birthdays. Not just on Sundays when you get to hear my sermon. Oh, you were generous on that thing. I appreciate it. No incredible laughter. I appreciate that. Not just at Bill's games. Yeah. <laughs> that could go wrong. Um, not just for hunting. Because that could be empty. Not just for that wedding. <coughs> Though that'll be lovely. Those aren't the red letter days that we just... Man, I'll have a red letter day when... Oh, man, that's like two and a half years from now. I hope I survive to that. No, a red letter day is available today. Tell your neighbor right now. A red letter day is available today. Go. A red letter day is available today. Facebook Live, listen to me. A red letter day is available. Boom! In this moment, right now. Enjoy it. Choose that this is going to be a red letter day. Here is the turning point for me this week. I don't even know what my notes are saying right now. I'm going to get away for just a second. Trust me, I'm coming back. And I'll stay on cue, okay? Here's the change for me this week. I, I go uh, read uh, Josiah's devotional Sunday morning, last Sunday morning. And as I'm reading it, it says um, this doctor was looking at a, a, a poster on his daughter's wall that says, joyful heart is good medicine. Cheerful heart, whatever that is, is good medicine. And as a doctor, he's thinking, I should be like prescribing that at the hospital. <laughs> and then he's like, he immediately thought, seven times a day, I give praise to him. And he put those two things together and started giving them out as a script to some of his patients as the Lord led. And it was better than giving out the most expensive drugs you could think of. So I'm reading this, and I think, at the end of it, it says, hey, you have a cell phone probably. You might want to think about setting an alarm for seven times a day or five times a day or three times a day. I'm not going seven, all right? That would drive me nuts. So I set my alarm on my phone for three times a day. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Noon. And five. I wanted to spread it out, right? And then I, you know that uh, horrible alarm sound that, that you happen to set for your, your alarm that's like, okay, I'm going to put four bullet holes in that before I get out of bed. Um, that's not the sound I chose. I want you to choose a sound, okay? I want you to choose a sound that you're like, yeah, 
yeah, that's pleasant. I could, I can praise to that. So I chose, uh, let's see if this will work. My alarm tone. Did you hear a bird in there? That's nice. <laughs> and when that goes off, I must stop whatever I'm doing and look around me and just give God praise. Whether it's two minutes, 15 seconds, five minutes, 10 minutes. Sometimes I'll take a walk a minute, just get up, take a break, shake things off, wait for it. Isn't that nice? And, and my wife doesn't even ask me um, what that is anymore. What is that? Something's playing. <laughs> Why don't you, now I rap whoever's in the room. I'm like, hey guys, what do you have to praise for? And, and then I uh, make them give it up right there. Listen, I'm telling you, something supernatural is happening right now. This week has been a red letter week. One red letter day at a time. Monday, 8 a.m., noon, 5 p.m. Tuesday, 8 a.m., noon, 5 p.m. Now you'd think, man, the pastor, you should remember to praise God all the time. <laughs> no, that, I, I, I wish that was the case. That I would think to praise God all the time. But I do have an enemy that seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. And want to get me off chart by not praising God. And he wants to do the same with you. So I'm going to put a challenge to you. Let's see. I will give a piece of candy to everyone who will set your alarm at least twice a day from now until next week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go ahead and set your alarm right now. Or write it on your page. I need you to set an alarm this week to praise. Go ahead. Write that down. Go ahead. Set an alarm. Maybe this, it's going to be 1 o'clock this afternoon. You can assign your alarm to praise. All right. Set it, set it for, the, for this afternoon so you remember to set up your times. Get with God. Say, God, what, what, what would my times look like? I'm telling you. If you, my wife, if I had her testify right now, would say... This has made him a lunatic this week with joy. I've, I've gone off the chart with joy. And it's been a week that I've had to endure MRI results. I've had to endure other things that you're like, not red letterish. But instead of saying why, I'm trying to practice. What was that again, God? All right. I've gotten more done this week than probably the last... Four weeks combined. By setting my alarm for eight, noon, and five? You betcha. There's something powerful when you intentionally set your alarm to praise. I'll give you the challenge. And then, and then please converse with me. Tell me how that's going. Tell me how that works for you next week. Where was I? This is week number two. The red letters of what Jesus said from the cross. I want us to have a picture that's going to be a reminder right now of the old 19, or excuse me, 1845. Honey, picture? Oh, yeah. I'm sharing she's, oh, she's, yeah, she's sharing. All right, that is, uh, that's the skull. If you can show uh, the laser on the, the skull, there's the eyes and the mouth. There's the hill called the skull in Jerusalem. The next picture is the cross. This is at the base of that, the skull mountain, where, not a mountain, it's a hill, um, where Jesus is crucified. So please turn with me to Luke chapter 23 in your Bibles. Luke 23, 32 to 34. Luke 23, and then you get a pick, uh, page number, please shut that out. 1046. 1046. Luke chapter 23, verse 32. 1046 in your Q Bible, my Verse 32, two other men, both criminals, were also led out with Jesus to be executed when they came to the place called the skull. Okay, one more picture for, for credit worthiness of this is the skull. There's a, somebody did a little art diagram of what that looks like. And side profile isn't quite as like, whoa, that is definitely the place of the skull. Everyone in Jerusalem knew where the place of the skull was. Everybody knew that it, they actually called it Skull Hill. If you go to Jerusalem today, there's a nice little placard that says Skull Hill, this way. 
lots of placards, actually, that guide you to the place of the skull. They crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. And Jesus does, and if you can pull up this, this next picture for me. Here's this picture of the criminals on his left and on his right. Depicting the atmosphere. And Jesus knowing that everybody just spat on me. Everybody just mocked me. Everybody just threw their insult. Everybody was questioning him. They're beating him. They're putting thorns on his head. They're punching him. They're betraying him. They're hating him. They're whipping him with shards of bone and metal. And he has so well ingrained in his heart the reason he's hanging on the cross that he says out loud, written in red, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Is there any deeper love that could be expressed by Jesus? Can you and I say about your enemy, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Or do we say other things about our enemy? How about remembering, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Say that with me. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. You got that memorized now? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. If you can remember that in the middle of the argument with your wife, right? And your wife says, Oh, Father, forgive that idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> All right, that's the legal use of that prayer, okay? But, but if you can take a step back and say in that spousal thing, Lord, forgive him. He doesn't understand me and where I'm coming from. I'm not going to hold on to this. Amen? Amen? Changes everything. How about that person at work who uses Jesus' name in vain? And you're like, oh, that grates on my spirit. And I know it does on God's. But Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Please don't shout it out loud. All right? Oh. But then pray for them. Because obviously they don't know the value of God's name. That they would use it in that manner. How about your boss demeans you at work? <laughs> Probably a woman. <laughs> oh, just kidding. You know, trying to it there. Good job. Somebody used it. Father, forgive him. He doesn't know what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Uh, moving along. Uh, let's try the BCAD test. Here we go. It's on your. It's on your insert. Here it is. BC, before you met Christ, right? This is before Christ for you in your personal walk. You blank me. You know what we say? You, and fill it in there. Oh, you owe me. You owe me. And the next one is justice is, what? We'll fill that in. Mine. Before Christ, that's what you're saying. You're busy saying, you're busy being offended, you're busy telling people off, you're busy being right, you're busy running your busy mouth before Christ. You owe me. How about after death? The after the death of me. After I put to death the sinful nature. How about after I come to know Christ? It looks like this. God blank me. God forgive. He forgave me. So write that in there. God forgave me. So I'll forgive. Write this in. You. God forgave me. Thank you. 
So I'll forgive you. How you doing? Can you get an A on this test? Or are we already at an F minus? All right, here we go. Listen, this is a tough one. Forgiveness is no light and easy deal. If it was a light and easy deal, there wouldn't have been one of those in Jesus' path. Amen? That is the reason he came is to forgive you, to be a bridge to forgiveness between us and a holy God. So, Matthew chapter 18, verse 23. If you'll turn there with me, if you will. Matthew 18, 23. We're going to talk about the parable of the unforgiving debtor. Real short, all right? Parable of the unforgiving debtor. This, uh, the word parable is just, uh, it's a fictitious story used to make a spiritual point, all right? So sometimes Jesus uses parables, and when he uses parables, he tells you he's using the parable, all right? Here we go. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. Good idea, right? Some of us should do that more often, amen? In the process, one of these debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. Note the next verse. He couldn't pay. So his master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. Oh, but that man fell to his knees before his master begged him, please be patient with me, and I'll pay it all back. Then his master, who was filled with pity for him, released him from his debt and forgave him. Time out. Here's the lesson. The lesson from the forgiven servant is the debtor cannot always, write this in, repay you. The debtor cannot always repay. Just like you and I could not repay the debt of sin we owed. Amen? Could you repay your debt? Anybody? No, I can't repay. I don't have the means to repay the debt of sin. Imagine me in that commercial. Lord, I've fallen and I can't get up. Right? Shouldn't be entertained by that. Nor should you. All right, anyway. So help at falling. I've fallen into this vat of sin that I don't know how to get out of. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming and bearing and taking my debt when I asked him to. Do you have anyone that owes you? Probably. Somebody who sinned against you? Somebody who's taken a piece of your good name? And tried to drag it through the mud so that they could stand on your good name. Or maybe they took something that you legitimately did. And they decided to broadcast it to the whole world. Lord, I'd like you not to forgive them. Right? That, that's how we feel. That's how you feel. It's not what we should be doing. But it's very natural to be like, I want to justify this. I want to take it into my own hands and make it right. Right? Right? Yeah, yeah don't, don't get too spiritual on me here. Here we go. <laughs> the offended can always show mercy. It's in, your, it's in your notes. The offended can always show mercy. In other words, the landlord can always forgive a debt. When somebody owes you, let me take this to the next level because some of us don't want to get it. When somebody owes you, you can forgive a debt. Say that out loud. I can forgive a debt. I can forgive a debt. Hey. Has anybody had a debt forgiven? 
I'm not, not, I'm not even talking spiritual. I'm just talking in the physical sense. Like, we racked up a wicked, wicked phone bill when my wife and I were um, engaged. And I was in Florida, and she's up here. And that was back in the day when you're tethered to a line stuck to a wall. You know what I mean? Weird how far we've come since then. That bill was like 1800 bucks, And my in-laws forgave the debt. I don't know if they're watching right now, but thank you so much. Because the interest on that would be really terrible right now. So we didn't have the wherewithal to pay that. When they paid the debt, we were like, yes, thank you, Lord. We were dumb to talk that long. What happened to us? We couldn't get off the phone. Remember those days when you're like, oh, no. I don't want to hang up first. You hang up first. Oh, I'm coming. I would not be the one to hang up first. <laughs> Back then, you didn't have unlimited data. All right, so <laughs> I was excited to have that debt paid in full. I want us to get that down into our spirit, that you got your debt paid in full when you came to Jesus and said, forgive me. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Oh, even worse, I didn't know. And I chose to hurt you anyway. And it hurt me as much as it hurt you. Forgive me. And he runs to you like a prodigal son. And he forgives all that debt of you. And then he throws you a party. And he kills the fatty calf. And you invite your friends as you've come home. But then you find somebody that owes you a few dollars. And you grab them by the neck and you say, pay back what you owe me. And that's where this story continues. This is where we, we're pretty cool with being forgiven, but we're not that great at forgiving others. Now, did a name just flash across your screen? Did you see somebody in your heart that you're like, hmm? I don't wish them the wellest thing on the planet. Yes, clear your throat. The appropriate time right there. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> I can think of somebody. You got one? We all got them. We all have them. And, and the severity of the offense is, is very, amen, right? Some of it's extraordinary abuse that I couldn't imagine. And you never should have gone through that. Amen. We're going to get to that in a moment. Some of it's like, well, that was ticky-tack. Why am I even so worried about that? Why, why does that gall me? I want us to realize that as a lender, you have the ability to offer mercy. And Red, written in red here goes a little bit deeper than it's just a suggestion that you forgive. It's actually pretty straightforward that we need to forgive. And I'm gonna before I even share, I'm gonna say this: God loves you so much that He knows the burden of a grudge. Have you ever pictured somebody with a grudge? Aren't they a wonderful piece of work to deal with? Those who are just wandering around throwing out, I have a grudge against him, and here's why, and I have a grudge against her, and this is exactly why. And you just want to spend quality time with them, don't you? Not really. No. No, because there's something about that grudge that has you pinned to the ground. And we think somehow we've got freedom by holding on to a grudge. God loves you enough and knows you well enough because he made you. That you and I need to give up the grudge. It is his to repay. Let him take care of so and so. You give them up. Amen? Amen. Let them go. Let them be God's detail to take care of. Verse 28. But when the man left the king, that's you and me after we leave getting forgiven of everything, Right? We went to a fellow servant who owed us just a few thousand dollars. We grabbed him by the throat, demanded instant payment. Then the king called you and I back in and said, you evil servant, I forgave that tremendous debt of yours because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have had mercy also on your fellow servant just as I had mercy 
on you. Then, in anger, the king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he paid back his entire debt. That's what it'll feel like, it'll seem like, if we refuse to forgive our brother or our sister from our heart. From our heart. So the words aren't good enough. Hey, hey this morning, okay, I'm going to say the words because I don't want a consequence. I forgive Jimmy. Well, God knows your heart that you didn't really forgive Jimmy. You just said the words. You forgive Jimmy, which doesn't forgive Jimmy. Right? You with me? Come on. It's time to forgive your brother from your heart. Now, question. What do you do when the offense seems too big? I know somebody in the room is asking it. Here's the answer. Jesus' love. Fill that in. Jesus' love is greater than any offense. Jesus' love can conquer any offense that is stuck in your heart. And Jesus wants you to release that offense. Lord Jesus, I, I, I'm not letting Jimmy off the hook. I'm just putting his hook on yours because it's yours to repay. Deal with them ever so severely or lightly as you choose. But as for me and my house, I am not going to harbor that anymore. I harbor no ill will towards him. Father, I'm going to obey this sermon. Forgive Jimmy. He knows not what he does. By the way, I don't have an offense against any Jimmy, which is a nebulous term I get to use in my house. Jimmy, you're off the hook with me. And guess what? That makes me about 180 pounds lighter. Jimmy was heavy. See, Jimmy's off my shoulders. I'm only 145. I can't bear Jimmy's weight and mine. I don't want to bench press him up the stairs and down the stairs all day. I don't want to carry him to work and carry him to home and carry him to kids. Because my offense with Jimmy is going to cause me to harm my wife and harm my children and harm relationships with you. And it's got me pinned to the floor under the weight of somebody I was unintended to be under. I forgive him from my heart, Lord. I come clean. Because I want to be obedient to you and free. Obedient to you and free. Matthew 6.14 does drive this home. And I'll just share this verse with you as we close here. For it is... For if you forgive men... Excuse me. If you forgive men when they sin against you... Your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your heavenly Father will not forgive your sins. Again, Jesus' words, written in red. And some of you might be like, well, that's harsh. No, it's, it's love. God loves you enough to be weightless. And if he paid all that debt of yours and somebody owes you 10 bucks, forgive the debt. Walk on. Amen? Even if it's real cash, they might owe you. Maybe somebody owes you 10 grand. They haven't paid yet, and you tore up about it. You want to be torn up about it? Go write it on a note, pray about it, and then tear it up. Throw it in the fire. Lord, I give it to you. If you want me to have another 10 grand, you'll, you'll probably give me 20 now that I just obeyed you. And I feel really light about that. Woo! It's awesome. When we let go of offense, let go. Of grudges. I hope we're getting this down in our spirit. Free of judgment. Free of malice. Free because we said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And you might say, well, they do know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. I really don't. Their eyes are closed. The veil's still over them. They don't know. Let them off. <coughs> In Jesus' name. I want to pray about this a second. And then I'm going to head into that little tidbit we're going to do. The, one of the miracles from the cross. And close. Ready? I'm going to pray for that thing that's on your heart. Here we go. Facebook Live. Keep, keep tuned in for that thing on your heart. Let's let that go right at your house. Who that is. Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. And, and Lord, maybe we got a Jimmy on our heart. And it's like, man... That offense, I, I, 
I, I, I, secularly, I want to hold on to it. I want to see him pay. But Lord, I pray that when we're doing that, we're actually nullifying your forgiveness of my sin. That I don't want to see me pay when you've died once and for all to forgive my sin. So Lord, I offer that incredible gift because you offered it first to me and repaid my debt of millions that I owed you in sin. So now I let my brother or my sister off the hook into your care. Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. And Lord, for somebody this morning who's like, man, that that's, this seems like it's going to be more of a process than a, a one-time deal. Lord, work that process out with each one of us powerfully because this is the reason you, you came. You died. You rose again. Thank you. Amen? Amen. All right. There were six historical incredible things that happened during the crucifixion that we want to talk about historically. Last week we talked about darkness covered the whole earth for three hours. If you didn't catch that, go back to Facebook Live from last week or go to enjoy www.enjoylwc.com and catch what that was. Week number two here, the temple was ripped. Temple veil was ripped from the top to the bottom when Jesus gave up his spirit. Now, how does this tie into forgiveness? <laughs> Glad you asked. It all 100% ties into forgiveness. Jesus is the, the new covenant, and he's replacing the old covenant. So, Matthew 27, 45, then Jesus shouted out again and released his spirit at that moment. <coughs> right there in that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple which was 60 feet high and 30 feet wide and six inches to a foot thick. This is one big veil. Huge veil. And this, this veil that was torn and ripped, this veil was only entered once a year to offer sacrifice for the people by a priest who had something tied on his leg in case they didn't make it. He wasn't in right position with God and he went before the Ark of the Covenant in the presence of God and he died. Fall back out. Jimmy didn't make it. <laughs> Next guy up. You know, there's 24,000 priests. I didn't know that until this week. Do you know how many men it took to pull the veil up into place on the lintels? Guess. Some of you already know, so you're going to be like, the exact number. But guess. Just, and and it's, it's Herod's men. Okay, well, that's, that's a lot. Oh, my goodness. Imagine 24,000 people standing in one place. 300. 300 dudes that were, you know. To pull that into place, this veil is in the Holy of Holies. And if you, the Holy of Holies is 20 cubits by 20 cubits by 20 cubits. It is this square place that the presence of God resided. Now, every day, morning and night, 9 a.m., 3 p.m., 9 a.m., 3 p.m., in the sanctuary, there were offerings being given up daily for the people, twice a day. 9 a.m., 3 p.m. Is that jiving with anybody? 9 a.m., 3 p.m. And the sixth hour, the ninth hour. <coughs> Jesus goes on to the cross at 9 a.m. and gives up his spirit at 3 p.m. Boy, that's significant, isn't it? Right when we're giving up the daily sacrifices that we talked about weren't good enough. They didn't actually take care of the sin of the people. But once and for all, Jesus gives up his spirit, and in that moment, he rips this veil in half that was meant to keep us outside 
of this presence of God, God in that moment becomes unveiled. And Jesus himself is the veil that in that moment is split and dies so that we could enter the Holy of Holies. No longer are we just, hey, you got to go through the priest. Hey, don't come to me and ask for me to pray some huge theological prayers or pastor because I have more weight than you do. I have no more weight than you do. You have the exact access to a red letter day I do. Because the temple veil is rent in two, and you and I can walk straight into the presence of the Holy God. Amen? So the, the power of what happened in that moment, and it happened at the apex in this, in this um, uh, I'm forgetting the, the term, thank you, the, the Passover, thank you. Passover, as they're, they're celebrating Jesus becomes what? The Passover that has been expressed for all of their time since Egypt. Jesus becomes the once and for all sacrifice. And there's 196 sermons I could throw in here right now. Let's just do seven of those. We got time, right? We can be like that one church that, that goes a couple hours. And we have 10 people next week. So I'm not going to do that. So, but I'm telling you what. Have some fun reading about and maybe watching some videos about the temple veil. And the significance of it being torn from top to bottom. To say, no longer do we have to have those sacrifices. The sacrifice the sinless Son of God, the blameless Lamb, comes and willingly lays down his life for his friends. Thank you, Jesus. So, I want to end with this. Hebrews chapter, have I said that a few times? Yeah. This time I'm seriously going to end with this. Somebody check me, fact check me on that in a second. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 22. Again, I might have you close your eyes. If you, if you need to write that down, Hebrews 10, 19 to 22. This sums up everything of today. Here we go. Therefore, brothers and sisters, by the way, we were reading this passage earlier, right before the song. I was quoting a passage. This is the continuance of that passage. Therefore, Brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great high priest, Jesus, over the house of God, let us draw near to God with sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Lord, right now, in this holy moment, understanding that when you died, everything was lined up to a perfect moment in time. Lord, you love us so much. And you're so incredibly flawless. We ask you right now, forgive me my flaws. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, which, Lord, we know you don't do. Each is tempted when, by his own evil desire, He's dragged away and enticed. And after sin is conceived, it gives birth to death. And death when it is full grown. Man, Lord, help us right now to allow you full reign in me. We want a red letter day, Sunday, the 30 whatever of the month this is. And Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, there's not a... Well, there's a couple of birthdays coming up this week, and that's, that's going to be awesome for those particular individuals on those particular days. 
But Lord, we want every day to be walking with you, red letter. Lord, just my wife and I looking around. If this morning you asked Jesus to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior, I want you just to raise your hand. We want to pray with you and we want to watch over you. Amen. 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 Lord, for those that I just saw that just say, I'm in. I pray that you'd supernaturally speak to their lives, bring them up to speed with you in power and your authenticity. And be with those in this room that are ministering to people who don't know you. And help us to remember, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I'm not going to hold on to that. I'm not going to hold a grudge. Help us to live our lives free from a sin debt we owe and free others from a sin debt they owe. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have an awesome day in him. I'll see you all at 4 o'clock. I'm soccer boy.